Develop the habits. You've got the brain power, you've got the energy, but develop the habits of success. So how do you start a business with no money under the worst conditions that your backer doesn't want to give you a dime? What do you do? Get ready for a lot of rejection and at the same exact time, do the things others don't want to do. Do what's necessary, do what it takes, no matter what it is, and try not to hurt anybody along the way. You know, I often say this would be 12 people at a table, right? and we're having a discussion about something. And something may turn up that could be an opportunity. Half the people don't recognize it's an opportunity. A lot of people are comfortable in what they're doing. They don't want change. People actually get into a zone where they're very comfortable. So they, they don't like the idea of risk. I see people, they want to do one little house. Then I see people, they want to do ten houses. And I see people want to do thousands of houses. Now this isn't a good time to be talking about houses. But the fact is, if you're going to think and if you're going to be doing something, do it big. In a certain way, it's better with the banks. In a certain way, it's better with buyers. You can make it more dramatic. I've always thought that each person invented himself for whatever reasons, through whatever circumstance, through whatever he has gone through, that we are each a figment of our own imagination. From day one, I just, I never tried to hide that I was the girl in my apartment with the red backpack. It's like, this is who I am. And um, I find that people end up rooting for you and opening more doors if you're really honest early on. Some people start businesses and try to come across that they're much bigger than they are because they feel like that's the only way they're going to be taken seriously. But if you know your product's great and you know why you made it, you don't have to apologize for being out of your home or your apartment or being small. You know, to create a business, you've got to initially work day and night, weekends. It's really hard work. I worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I cared. That's what I cared about. I cared about solving problems, being successful. Anytime an obstacle presented itself, I used it to my advantage and made it work. And I never heard the word no. If I heard the word no, it meant maybe. And then I made maybe yes. In the end, uh, luck plays a very important part in how successful you are, but the harder you work and the longer you work, the luckier you're going to be. People need to understand that we cannot take a breath, that we have competitors who want to take the food off of our table. We have an economy in which there's 8% unemployment here, 9% unemployment in the U.S., and Starbucks Coffee Company is not something you have to have. It is a discretionary purchase. And so the mentality that you need in a business today, Starbucks or otherwise, to build sustainable success and enduring success is you have to eradicate the human behavior of relaxing, the human behavior of feeling like we have won. And what I have said in the last two years of Starbucks is there's no celebration, there's no victory lap. We haven't done squat. I don't have the same opportunity as you do. Yeah, you do. You do. You have every bit the opportunity that I did. And so you can go out there and do it. Somebody said, well, what was your goal? Goal? Make money. You have the power to just, I mean, you can sit down, you can code something, you can try it. You, it doesn't matter to you whether someone thinks it's a good idea or not because you have the power to go put that online and, you know, and see whether it resonates and connects with people. Stay focused on, on the stuff that, that you're that you're providing to your users, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. It doesn't matter. You don't get judged by the mistakes. People don't remember those years from now. They remember the things that you did that were good. There's always going to have to be an element of luck, but I think more important is putting yourself in a business that can be ubiquitous, that, that, can, that really doesn't have limits. Because otherwise, there's always going to be a grind to it. But if the business, if, if, if it can't be something that you can visualize every business using or every consumer using, it's going to be tough to scale to be big enough or to have the perceived value to get you to that billionaire club. I grew up under a premise. Uh, go in an industry that has a large profit margin. Don't go in one that's slim. Go in one that's large. Take what you've got. Your assets are your energy. Your assets are your willingness to just not be told no, the harder it is, 
the tougher it is, the bigger the challenge to get in, the bigger the opportunity behind. Uh, the opportunities behind are endless. Now, Apple, fortunately, is one of the half a dozen best brands in the whole world, right up there with Nike, Disney, Coke, Sony. It is one of the greats of the greats, not just in this country, but all around the globe. And, but, but, but even a great brand needs investment and caring. If Alexander the Great could conquer the known world, why couldn't I start CNN? I thought it through really carefully, but I have I'd studied a lot, a lot more than most of my competitors. Most people haven't worked as hard as I have or studied as hard as I have, because when you look back in my life, most of my decisions, almost all of them were brilliant. What fear is stopping you in your tracks and burning the soles of your feet? What if conquering that fear, whatever it is, that keeps you from being what the Creator intended for you? What if you could unleash everything great in your life? Would you do it? Would you say yes to that? Don't allow anyone, friend, family, acquaintance, teachers, whoever it is, don't allow anyone to tell you that what you are dreaming for yourself and your family is not possible. It is possible. Don't be one of those people 20 years from now are going to be walking around in a 9 to 5 job miserable and angry and bitter. To punish failure is yet another way to encourage mediocrity because mediocrity is what fearful people will always settle for. I like to see people. I think it's really important even if it's 10 minutes I hate all this new world of people are talking. So I like the idea of seeing people. I think you get a very different view when you look in somebody's eye. You, you, you know in a second whether it's right. I mean, I see these people, they're like eight yards away at a desk and they're busy. I said, well, go and talk to them. Why are you emailing each other? Go, go have the conversation. What happened before email? People spoke. Hello, good morning, how are you? Companies like Google are not getting rich on user-generated content. They're getting rich on the content of companies like Viacom, and we're not going to put, put up with that. We're not going to put up with people taking our product and not paying for it. They want our product, they can have it at the right price. I'm going to put the vast majority of my energy, attention, and dollars into building a great product or service and put a smaller amount into shouting about it, marketing it. Because I know if I build a great product or service, my customers will tell each other. I'm, you have to mix in some patience with that. New companies generally shouldn't exist. Um, um, existing companies are usually pretty good at what they do. Um, and so for a new company to exist, it not only has to like, you know, come in go, you know, go into business and bring a product to market, but it has to bring a product to market that's so much better than what already exists that it punches through the sort of status quo. How can you achieve your dreams? I'll tell you the secret, but nobody ever follows it. Just do things, dip, just do things in life the way other people don't do that. Change the status quo, and then you'll succeed. I've said that a thousand times, nobody listens. If you do anything, you're going to get in trouble. If you don't do anything, you won't be in trouble, but you won't get anywhere either.